Data flow diagrams are a graphical representation of the flow of data within your project. So basically, if these are the functions in my project and they're call tree, how are they interacting with this particular global object? Um, how is the data changing over time? At the beginning of my project execution, it looks like this. What does it look like at the end? What does it look like in the middle? Uh, we're happy to announce that we've released these data flow diagrams in Understand. So let's take a let's take a look at how they work and how you can use them in your project. I've got one open just to show you what they look like and talk about the different parts that make up the diagram. And then I'll go into detail on how to generate them and how to change some of the options in here. Uh, what we're looking at here is the data flow in for the global object named saved. This is a sample project that we ship with understand. It's the Linux kernel. And we can see saved over here, highlighted in blue on the graph. Now, we can see down in the legend that these circles represent global objects. Um, the rectangles are the default node shape for this graph. And in this case, those represent functions. So what we see here is all of the functions that call specific global objects in this call tree. Uh, we can see save. That's the primary one that I requested. But we can also see that video segment is also being called in this call tree. And they are clustered by what file and what directory these functions appear in. Um, so the different colored arrows represent the different ways that the data is being used. We can quickly see where data is modified and where it is just used, for example. If you zoom in on the graph a little bit, you can see the colors clearly. Now, I'm slightly colorblind, so what I like to do is right-click on this set of, set of arrows, and you can quickly see the references in the code where, where the function restore screen is actually changing our global object saved that we're interested in. We can also see everywhere that it's using it. And we can quickly visit any one of those locations and see where that interaction is taking place. Sure enough, right there on line 263, restore screen is, is getting that data from saved. Um, so how can you make your own graphs? How does this work? So first, I'm going to use the entity filter to get a list of all the global objects in my project. And then I'm going to pick one. In this case, I'm going to pick adapter and right click on it and select graphical views. Now we have two options here, data flow in and data flow out. Data flow in represents all the data, everything that's affecting the object that I'm looking at. And data flow out is everything that's being affected by the object. So I'm going to actually select both really quick. Um, graphical views again, data flow out. And we'll notice that there are two functions that are actually affecting adapter, the data that's making up adapter. And there are three functions that are affected by adapter directly. Um, now, if we look at the places where the data is being set here in by VGA probe, we can see there's three places. Now, if we look over in the data flow out, we can see that there's also three other places where the data is being used by the same function. So the same function can show up in both graphs depending on when it's changing the object and when it's being changed by the object. So how does this graph work? How can we navigate it? Well, we've got these arrows, first of all, in our nodes. And these basically are going to walk up the call by tree. Now, we can see in this case, if I click on that node, I can see everything that is calling VGA probe. I can continue to walk up this tree. And as I select random nodes, we can see that um, there are other global objects entering the pip picture here. So CGA mode is actually modifying VGA probe, which in turn is modifying adapter. And so we can see that um, there's several layers of dependencies going on. And we can continue to walk up this tree manually. Or we can right click and select level 
and say how many levels we want to expand. Now you have to be careful with this one. Uh, if you go too big, make sure you have a super powerful computer because calculating the layout can be really expensive computationally. I'm just going to do three levels for this particular graph um, because my laptop's not that powerful. Um, so what I see here is a big mix of colors. Everything's interacting with each other. There's sets, modifies, uses, defines, all of those going on here. Um, let's say there's something I want to focus on in particularly though. Um, let's say I'm interested in CGA mode. So there's a bunch of options with the graphs. I can highlight the edges going out, for example, and everything coming out of CGA modes is going to be highlighted. And let's do the same thing here as I follow this trail here and it's gonna line it up the parts that I'm interested in so I can follow those now let's say that's what I really am interested in right now I can actually hide all unhighlighted edges in my project which is gonna clean it up and let me focus on just the things that I'm interested in right now so if I'm interested in how CGA mode affects adapter now I've narrowed it down. I can see the lines. I can visit them and see exactly what's going on here. Um, turn that off again. Now let's say I'm interested in rearranging this a little bit. This is the simplified version. It just shows the functions and the objects, but we can also cluster it. And this is going to arrange everything according to the files that each, each function and object belong in and the directory or if you've made custom architectures it'll rearrange them according to whatever organizational structure you've set up in your project. Now here we can see all of these functions neatly tidied up into files. Let's say there's a few files that I'm more interested in or not. I can I can aggregate things coming in and out so that there's a little less noise on the graph. I can go ahead and basically customize the graph to explore exactly which relationships I'm interested in. Uh, there's a whole palette of options for highlighting and hiding different parts of the graph. And again, I can continue to expand the tree and actually explore the relationships that I'm interested in following right now. And as I do that, the new nodes are added to the graph and in this case, arranged into the architectural nodes like that. In this case, notice the dotted lines that indicates an unresolved entity or something that we don't have the source code for, probably something from a header file. I can click on it to see more information. And OK, those are macros that actually end up modifying this file So, or this function. So I can quickly see how adapter is being modified in in as much depth as I'm interested in or if I want to keep it very simple I can just see where it's who its direct parents are and that's the data flow diagrams